Hi, I'm Andy the Northern Diver and in this video I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the Orca Torch D710 Dive Light. So for those of you who follow me on Instagram or subscribe to this YouTube channel, you might not be a stranger to the fact that I bought myself a new Nauticam underwater camera housing a few weeks ago and in doing that I made myself an unboxing video and it went pretty well and so well that Orca Torch reached out to me and asked me would I do a similar video for one of the new released um, dive lights and this one's the D710 so it comes out of the cardboard box it comes in this nice hard case to sort of protect it carry it and store all the bits that comes with it so let's open it up and see what it comes with so in the box you can see it's got a foam lined compartment to house the torch and a couple of ancillaries and then it's got a little pocket bit at the top a little net, sort of mesh netted pocket that comes with a bit of literature and what looks to be a lanyard now I wouldn't potentially use this but I think it's really handy because you can just loop that through the top and then you've got this nice rubber sort of soft supported bit to put over your, over your wrist full tightening if, even if you drop the torch for whatever reason you're always going to have it there so that's that's good then looking at the literature then there's three pieces in here the first one is sort of like a catalogue of stuff that they do what jumps out to me straight away is they do underwater video lights well that's massively interesting to me being a, a bit of an underwater photographer and video maker so I'm going to look at them for future now being a bloke this is this instructor user manual is probably never going to get read but in all fairness I have read it uh, prior to making this video and the English is very very good and it makes a lot of sense looking through the the sort of technical parameters it lets you know sort of the battery length depending on what the different settings are that we'll go on to shortly. It comes with a warranty card. Now there's, there's four main things to fill in here. So there's the model number, so that's the D710. The date of purchase, well, where, if you bought it today, right today's date. The serial number, which you'll find within the product information. And then the store stamp. And certainly, if you're buying online, you're not really going to find it that easy to get the store to stamp it. So if you bought it from um, Dive Shop Direct, right Dive Shop Direct on there, that's probably the easiest bit. There's some tips, the registration uh, web page, and then notes on how to go about claiming on the warranty. So inside the foam line case then, we've got some O-rings, a USB charging lead, and the torch. Wow, feels nice that. So looking at the O-rings first, there's three of them. They come in a sealed bag with some silicon grease on there. I'm a massive advocate of carrying and save the dive box. So I'd write on there, D710 or Orca torch or backup light, whatever that torch is to you, write it on the bag and when you put it in your little save the dive box, when you're looking for them O-rings because you need them, it'll stand out. So next comes the cable, you've got a USB to USB-C which is the norm now certainly on Apple products, so that'll that's your charging lead. And then the torch, so it's about the same size as your hand, so ideal for me as a backup torch to be sort of slung off my wing and harness on a D-ring, so it's got a nice ring at the top that I can put, I can I can sort of lash or leash a bolt snap on there, clip it off to a D-ring and a snoopy loop to hold it on, and that way it works perfectly for me. It's really accessible and, and easy to go. So let's go top to bottom. So it's got two side coated toughened glass, which allows the whole thing to get to 150 meters, which is well out the depth I'm ever gonna get to, but it gives me some sort of confidence that even in the 50 meters of, of water column that I'll ever be in this should well withstand the kind of dives I'm on if it can go three times deeper so I'm quite happy with that. So the torch body is an aircraft grade aluminium which is the latest diamond grade hard sea corrosion resistant finish known to man. So you could drop this from about a meter and a half high they say and it's not going to chip or damage the torch so it should be you know, quite robust in that respect. Certainly if it's going to 150 meters, you want it to be pretty robust. So moving down, you've got a titanium push switch that activates the features of the torch. And in the center of there is a little green or red light, depending how how charged the battery is. So if it's above 30%, it'll be green. And if it's below 30 and above 10%, it'll be red. So to, to activate the torch, what you do is you press it twice, which will bring it on, it'll flash twice first. And then you press it for its first push, it then comes on and it's high power, which is 1700 lumens, and it'll burn for an hour and 40 minutes, which is certainly enough for 
to get you out of any sort of dive site if you were using it as a backup torch. So pressing it twice then brings it onto its medium setting which is 800 lumens and that'll burn for 3 hours and 50 minutes so plenty of time you could have at least 4 decent dives over the space of a weekend without charging it leaving it on its medium setting. Pressing it a third time brings it onto its lower setting which is 400 lumens and that'll burn for a whopping 7 hours and 40 minutes. Well you're definitely going to get a day if not a week's worth of diving out if you're using it on its low setting. Now press and hold it and that boosts it on whatever setting you're on up to its maximum with 3000 lumens. So for instance if you're trying to get somebody's attention or actually show them something on the dive site the 3000 lumens would be really good. Press it a fourth time and it turns off. So if you've finished prepping all your kit or you're packing it away for a period of time what you don't want is anything to press the button and turn the torch on. So if you press and hold it for a period of five seconds the light will flash twice indicating it's now gone into its lock function so no matter what you do with the button press it or press and hold it it won't come on which is brilliant because what you don't want is discharge that but if you'd forgotten to do that and it was turned on accidentally it's got a heat protection uh, circuit within it so if it reaches anywhere near 65 degrees because the, the ambient water isn't there to cool the head it'll start to degrade its power setting to the point that it'll turn off if it was reaching that sort of temperature to come out of the lock facility then, you press it twice in quick succession and that should flash twice and then you just back on to the normal functionality of it so three clicks, two off. The light has got a maximum burn of 3000 lumens and an angle spread from the luminous LED of 60 degrees which is what you want from a torch really, you don't want such a wide angle when you're not using it as a video light or anything like that. Looking at the wall at a gap of about say 12 or 18 inches, so just over a foot and you can see the corona in the centre and the sort of halo effect of the wider angle of the beam just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like compared to like a video light that wouldn't have that corona in the centre. So hopefully that's, that's good enough on this image so you can see what it's about. So the diamond hard finish goes up and, and inside of, of all the parts where the threads are which is great to know you, that that's going to be protected from the sea. You've got three O-rings which give it that extra bit of depth protection. It's important to make sure there's no bits of fluff or, or sand or grit or anything on there and you, you lube them up. And I'd also be an advocate of putting sort of a little bit of lubricant, not too much, but around the threads just to allow them to work together. Looking at the top of the battery, you can see where the USB-C lead goes in there. And so it's a rechargeable 21700 and it's a 5000 milliamp hours, which is quite a lot and it's obviously got a, a male and a female part to it. What's interesting is, is that if you were to put the battery in the wrong way around, it's got a cross polarity sensor. So if you to put it in the wrong way around, it just won't work, but it means it's not gonna damage. So making sure that the O-rings are all seated correctly and there's no rubbish on there, do it up nice and gently. Now obviously I wasn't at the point where I thought I'd finished doing it up, so I might have over tightened it. So this is a technique I learned a while ago just back it off half a turn, nice and gently, and then just using your fingertips, just screw it up to the point that it nips up. That way you've not over tightened it and it should be pretty easy to open again. Let's just give it a test. Yeah, it's working. Two, three, four, and it's off. Now, because I'm not going to use this again, I'm going to put it into the lock function. So I press it five seconds. That'll flash twice. And that's it done. So what I'm going to do is go and do a field test. I'm going to put the D710 up against my Light Monkey primary torch. And hopefully we'll be able to compare the two and show why one that's about £160 in the UK is good enough to, to sort of back up a torch that costs six or £700 when you... So what I've set up in the bath then, I've got my primary torch head and then I've got the Orca Torch D710 dive light. I'm going to do turn them both on and compare the beams. So I'll start off with the primary torch head. Hopefully you can see that there's a nice big sort of cone coming out of there. Turn on the D710, very sort of similar angle, similar sort of colour, slightly more yellow in the centre for the Corona. Flip through from 1700 lumens to 800 to 400 and then the turbo boost at 3000 lumens. It's a lot brighter than the primary torch head that I've got and hopefully would work really well as a backup light should I need it. So I'd like to thank Orca Torch for sponsoring this video by giving me this torch to do an unboxing video and a review. If you want any more information, I'll put it in the description below. 
where, where you can go about buying one and all the technical specs of it and whatever. So hopefully you've enjoyed the unboxing and review of the Orca Torch D710 Dive Light. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed to the channel already, please hit the subscribe tab below. That way it's really easy for you to go and see all of our other content. At the side of that, you'll see the little bell icon. By clicking that, that'll give you a notification every time we post a new video. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one. See you on Insta.